In this video, let's go ahead and go through some of the example folder structures that we can use for different submittal types. Now, usually from a formatting point of view, what I'll do is I'll put in the job number here at the very beginning. Then I'll do a space dash space and then put in a three digit submittal number. Usually you don't have more than 999 submittals, but if you do, then you could go to a four digit number. And the reason why I have a unique submittal number or transmittal or package number is so that way, even if on the same day I have multiple packages, between the detail and the fabricator, it's very easy to communicate exactly which submittal or package number that you're referring to related to a specific set of content and files. Then usually after that, I do space dash space and I put in usually the description or the type of submittal such as ABM, IFA for issue for approval, IFC issue for construction, or sometimes IFF issued for fabrication. And then if it's revised for fabrication, I might put in IFC uh, space rev. Now on top of this, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put in a description about what is this an IFA for. So maybe it's IFA for anchor bolts or IFA for the main structural or ABM for columns. Um, IFA for a certain stair. So if you want to put additional descriptors after this, then you can. But basically you want to create a consistent format that's easy to read so that way when it's put into a folder by the fabricator, they can easily find and sort the different submittal packages. Usually I include the submittal date at the end of the uh, submittal folder name. And I do this in year, then two digit month, and then two digit date at the very end. Again, that's related to sorting here in the list. And the reason why I put the submittal date in there is that's the actual date that I remember as the detailer transacting this package to the fabricator. Um, so that way, even if the date modified in the folder changes or the date created is different than the actual submittal date, the folder name itself will actually contain that name so that way the fabricator knows when that submittal package was sent to them. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the insides of each of these different submittal packages. First, we'll go inside of the ABM folder. Now, one thing that I want to point out, especially for the fabricators, is that you want to come in here. I'm in Windows 11, but if we go to the View menu here at the top and we go to Show, we want to turn on this file name extensions. In Windows 10, it's actually under the View menu and there's a checkbox uh, that's uh, approximately right here on the, on the Explorer view in the menu. And you want to turn on the file name extensions. The reason for that is then you can see the extension at the end. So here I can look at the name of this file and it's very similarly named to the submittal package folder name, but it's a .ifc file. So I know that this is the IFC import for Tecla PowerFab or Tecla EPM. And here I can also look at the type of file to also tell what it is as well. Now here, this is just a generic zip file. So how do I know what this is? Well, I'm gonna look inside of there and I can see that based on seeing an attributes folder, a DB1 file, this is actually a Tecla Structures model folder. So oftentimes fabricators will request the entire Tecla Structures model at each submittal. So that way, if they have to do any additional reporting or extractions and things like that, they can do that themselves with native Tecla Structures. Also, some fabricators have custom tools and things built on top of Tecla structures that they apply statuses and things like that too. So sometimes it's requested to send the entire Tecla structures model. Now, sometimes you'll also see a KISS file that may be requested by fabricators. Again, if you're using Tecla PowerFab or Tecla EPM, it's recommended to use the Steel Fabrication View IFC file, but sometimes fabricators may request a KISS file for import into their MRP solutions. Now let's go ahead and go to the IFA package. Here we have a simple erection drawings folder. So here it's got the individual PDFs and the names of the PDFs are each drawing and the drawing name. So AB1 for anchor bolt one and erection drawing one there. Then we have the shop folder, which is shop drawings. In this example, this is individual assembly uh, drawings. So instead of multi drawings where there's a drawing number and multiple assembly marks on one sheet, this setup here for this particular fabricator is doing single assembly drawings. So each piece mark or each shipping mark and assembly has its own unique uh, drawing here. And the name of the PDF is going to be the piece mark of that assembly. Then what we have is the PFXT file. Now this PFXT file is basically the Tecla PowerFab or Tecla EPM export from Tecla Structures, or sometimes referred to in the industry as the XML file. 
Now really what this is, is it's just a zip file that contains the drawing files, the PDFs um, that have been packaged up with the Techly EPM or PowerFab export, as well as an XML file, which contains the bill materials and quantities of assemblies and parts in the model. So you could actually rename this PFXT file to a zip file, and then you'd be able to unzip it like a normal zip file and see the contents and things inside of that. I'm not gonna do that here, but usually what you want is the detailer to export the XML or the Tecla PowerFab export to be the, PX or the PFXT format, so that way it's very easy for you to see. And you'll even see here that the file type name is Tecla PowerFab exchange file. Now again, here we have the Tecla structures model folder uh, zipped up here as well in this particular submittal, just like we had in the ABM submittal. Now, let's go to the IFC folder. This has very similar information to IFA, but it has additional information. So we've got the erection drawing folder, very similar to the IFA, but now we have a NC files folder. Now here you're gonna see all of the main shapes that might go on a beam line, such as your wide flange, HSS shapes, um, and things like that, or channels. These are uh, usually the shapes that are going to go on your beam line. And then th there might be a plates folder, which is going to contain all of the DSTV or NC1 files that you would run on your uh, plasma or laser uh, plate table. And then we uh, also have a DXF folder, which is basically just DXF files converted from those plate uh, NC1 or DSTV files using the Tecla uh, DSTV to DXF converter. Some plate nesting software requires these to essentially be in DXF format instead of the DSTV or NC1 format. So these files are there. And then sometimes there's actually another folder for angles. So that way, if you have like an angle master and you wanna feed those into that machine rather into your beamline machine, then you can have all of those files for angles in that folder. Next, we have the part folder, which this contains all of the individual PDF drawings, like eight and a half by 11s of your submaterial parts or your submaterial drawings. So each submaterial piece mark will be listed here with its own individual drawing. Then we have the shop drawings, which again is the assembly drawings. And in this case, each assembly mark has its own individual drawing. We have the PFXT file, which is the Tecla PowerFab XML or uh, PowerFab Exchange file export for importing into Tecla PowerFab. Again, that'll contain the drawings, CNC files, as well as the XML bill material and quantities to import into PowerFab. And then we have the Tecla structures model. And one other thing that I sometimes do here is I will actually um, export uh, the bolt list. I'll run the 350 bolt list within Tecla and that way the fabricator can actually come in here and they can look at this bolt list and compare that against what was imported in from Tecla PowerFab. Especially with field bolts, uh, some fabricators will ignore the field bolts imported from Tecla EPM uh, from you know, the import the PFXT file here, and they will actually just input those bolts themselves depending on how they want to organize and uh, you know kind of map and ship those bolts out. All right, so that gives you a pretty good overview of the different submittal types. And you want to kind of uh, be consistent in your naming convention. Have the job number, the submittal package number in the description, similar to the folders. Kind of keep the same folder names the same. Don't add like shop drawings at the end of it. You want to create consistency in these folder names on each of the submittal types. So that way the fabricator just gets used to it, looking for very specific folders and exactly what it is that they're trying to find very quickly, no matter what job and what submittal package type. If you found this content useful, please subscribe to our channel and press the alerts button to be notified when we upload new content.